This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. On today's program, I will try to provide a broad overview of the actions of billionaire financier and philanthropist George Soros, the man who broke the Bank of England, as he was known back in 1992, and who has been manipulating nations, international politics, revolutions, and all sorts of nonsense over the past 30 years. And it should be understood that Soros is dedicated to a philosophy, an ideology about how society should work adapted from his mentor, Karl Popper's theory, of the open society. That is a shadow, actually, of Popper's vision and contains a Marcusean twist. In a future episode, I will be going into Popper's vision of open society and how Soros' intentions take Popper's ideas really to absolutely absurd conclusions. Well, Soros founded dozens of foundations to push the world in that direction, towards a chaos which then will be made into order, led by his flagship nonprofit, Open Societies Foundations. Now, Soros is quite open about his objectives, and in his more vocal days, just 10 years or so ago, he used to wax eloquent about his goals for humanity. Well, up until about 2017, Soros had donated more than 32 billion to his foundations to realize his open society vision, and his foundations give away almost $1 billion annually now to make open society a global reality. Soros's open society network of foundations and nonprofits has a physical presence in dozens of countries around the world, supporting largely left-wing progressive causes, such as gender ideology, as well as other ideas to think about what crime means or what law means and so forth. Maybe you'll start to see a consistent pattern here. The Open Society's network has incurred the displeasure and anger of several governments, including those of Vladimir Putin's Russian Federation, which could arguably be more of a credit than a black mark, actually, but specifically Hungary and as well Viktor Orban. So Hungary, remember, is Soros' birth country. But billions of dollars flowing through such a tangled web of organizations have inevitably generated widespread speculation, more than a few conspiracy theories, and sometimes outright fear. But the thing is, is that many of these conspiracy theories are not just theories. They are things that are hiding in plain sight. They're there to see. They're actually not shy about it at all. But if you ever bring attention to it or shine a light upon it, then you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, now we have China to thank, who has just named George Soros a terrorist in China for what he does throughout the rest of the world. He is now doing to China. So I guess that validates it. So Soros' Open Society Network's ironic lack of transparency only feeds the speculation and concerns. Every single time that Soros is attacked, everybody's being accused of, of course, being anti-Semitic, when in fact George Soros is the most anti-Semitic person around, trying to disrupt and dismantle Israel. But trying to untangle this riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma would be the work of a lifetime, if not many lifetimes of people, but I'll try to do the best that I can here over the next week or so. So money and influence flows through the network to its allies in nations across the world, but the exact amounts, destinations, and purposes are largely hidden. Now, the way that Soros has done this now is being replicated by many others, including folks like Tom Steyer, and as well folks like Ronnie Chan and Asia Society. But Soros is involved in all sorts of efforts to destabilize both the United States and Europe through massive funding of district attorney candidates in local U.S. elections, meddling in European parliamentary elections, and supporting of caravans of migrants from all sorts of places, from Haiti, from South America, from Central America, attempting to cross 
the U.S. southern border and to gain access to the United States. Yes, Soros and his NGOs and 501c3s are largely responsible for the coordination and facilitation of the massive influx at our southern border, along with other initiatives to fundamentally deconstruct the United States. But since 2015, Soros has spent more than $17 million on district attorney and other local races in swing states, such as Pennsylvania, Virginia, Arizona, and in large predominantly left-of-center states such as California and New York. So Soros' huge contributions make it difficult for other candidates to compete. District attorney elections are usually on a small scale, and the campaigns typically do not need to raise millions to run local ads and mobilize voters. So when Soros' vast resources appear, constituents are swamped with propaganda, and the opposing non-liberal candidates are often victims of unfair character assassinations, such as defaming them as racists and white supremacists, or maybe the patriarchal, toxic masculinity, whatever you want to call it. It goes on and on and on, but it's the same kind of mumbling back and forth that's been going on for years with anyone that opposes what Mr. Soros wishes to accomplish. Now, while Soros states that his objective includes ending mass incarceration in American prisons, his actual attempt is to end law and to end law enforcement and the American prison system is the back end of the law enforcement system. Well, this is another reason why you have seen the endorsement of what we would consider criminality in places where Soros has district attorneys like San Francisco and Philadelphia. And the Soros strategy is also behind why so many incarcerated individuals were allowed to go free during the reflexive response to COVID-19 in 2020. Maybe you remember that. What started as contribution to the American Civil Liberties Union many years ago has now evolved into a larger, broader, more granular effort to change the U.S. law enforcement system from the ground up by electing like-minded or twisted-minded local prosecutors. Now, as I was saying before, Soros' entanglements are not just in the United States, but in Europe as well. So leaked internal documents from the Open Societies Foundations headquartered in New York City demonstrate clear intent from the top to deliberately alter election outcomes in other countries, particularly in the 2014 elections of the European Parliament and some national parliaments in Europe. Well, in the early 2010s, Open Societies Foundations became increasingly worried about the European Union and trends in Europe that were creating an increasingly hostile environment for Open Societies Foundations. Maybe you remember what happened with Grexit and Brexit. Well, to counter and even reverse these trends, Open Societies Foundations adopted a two-level strategy to reduce the number of opponents of the Open Society who get elected. So Open Society Initiative for Europe OSIFE, distributed $5.7 million, or 5.7 million pounds, to organizations to turn out the vote in sympathetic constituencies. And so the Open Society European Policy Institute, again, you have another NGO, another, let's say, organization that's being used to specifically target one area that Mr. Soros wants to change, was assigned to engage pan-European parties to influence their manifestos and campaigning tactics. Now, however, these efforts to achieve particular election outcomes appear to violate U.S. tax on non-profits. So if you're to try to look at this from a whole, we're going to be looking back at the New York offices of Open Societies Foundations. And a leaked internal Open Societies Foundation document indicates that Open Societies Foundation's International Migration Initiative provided 40 grants, totaling more than $8 million to 22 organizations during 2014 to 2016. Now, almost half, or $3.7 million, went to organizations working on migrant and refugee issues in the Asia Middle East Corridor and the Central America, Mexico corridor. In North America, Soros and his foundations are apparently trying to erase U.S. national borders by facilitating refugee crises on the U.S. southern border. 
it's a lot like the European refugee crisis of 2015 to 2017, which put massive pressure on the European Union. So Open Society's foundations invested $136 million to influence societies, politics, and economics in Latin America from 2015 through to 2018, along with tens of millions of dollars for U.S. groups supporting illegal immigration. So these migrant caravans assembled in this context, and kind of contrary to what media narratives are saying, these migrations were not spontaneous. And if you were to think that they are spontaneous, you're now looking absolutely foolish. So when you are watching television or watching something that's scrolled across your feed in Facebook, and you see thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming into concentrated areas that then cross, let's say, the Rio Grande River, and maybe they're folks that are not from Mexico or Central America, maybe they're from Haiti, maybe they're from the Middle East, and they're loaded onto buses and distributed to other places all around the nation. Now you can thank someone specifically for organizing and facilitating all of this mess. That's right, Mr. George Soros. But this next week, while I am traveling, by the way, so you're going to hear a lot of different strange sounds as I go from place to place and as I quickly try to record these programs, but I want to make sure that you get all the information as it is coming and also to make sure that you can understand what's going on around you. It's so important that we begin to really take all these things, whether it be the migration crisis or what's happening in our universities, or what's happening with gender pronouns, or what's happening actually with China, and with the deconstruction of their economic systems, you have a person that you know that you can thank for a lot of what's happening right now, and as well as his institutions and those that work for him that are doing his bidding. And that's right, it is George Soros and Open Societies Foundations. Now, of course, this is coordinated with the World Economic Forum and the United Nations, so you're really looking at two different, I guess you can call them, teams that are really vying for world domination. So the main two players, and there are a few others, are the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, and of course, Open Societies Foundations. And on the other side, the Chinese Communist Party, as well as all the nations that are wrapped up now in their Belt and Road Initiative. So we're going to take a look at these issues and make sure that when you are seeing the world and you're seeing events around you, that you can understand what is going on. And also, as you begin to listen to your politicians, and not just the ones on the far left, also those that are neoconservative, maybe those fake Republicans like, I don't know, like Mitt Romney in lipstick and, and heels, which would be Nikki Haley, uh, when you hear things that they say, you're going to be able to understand what's behind this and also understand which politicians have whom in their pockets. So it's my goal in the next several weeks to begin to help you with that. So we will explore Mr. Soros in order to understand the why behind what he does in so many catastrophic changes that you are experiencing today, and as well, which politicians are in his pocket. We'll also take a look at China as well. So that's my goal over the next week. And I'm glad that you're with us on public occurrences, both foreign and domestic.